You know, the, the more you talk, the older I felt. I mean, like, I, I thought I was going to have to get a cane and come up here. I mean, this was bad. No, David, hey, thank you very much for the invitation, and thank you guys for the warm welcome. But before I talk about um, what I'm going to talk about, I, I have a, a thank you <clears throat> that's about nine years in the making. You see, back in 2012, I ran for state representative in this district, and Orange County came through for me in a very big way. Now, unfortunately, I lost. We'll just blame that on Jefferson County. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> excuse me, that being said, I never got a chance to properly thank Orange County for coming out strong for conservative values and for Texas. And so for me to you, thank you very much. I really do appreciate you. Well, let's get down to the topic of the hour. You're not convinced, <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you, I'm not necessarily here to convince. I'm here just to have a discussion and talk a little bit about Texas. So, show of hands, how many people here believe in fundamental rights that are God-given? Show of hands. Let's get that out of the way, okay? I'm in the right room. I, I didn't secretly slip into an Antifa meeting. That makes me happy. <clears throat> So you like rights, and you like the fact that they're written in something called a Bill of Rights, correct? Okay, now we understand that the Bill of Rights does not give us any rights. Who do those rights come from? Okay, great. So no men or set of men or institution can take those rights away from us, correct? Okay, good. I am in the right room. So... I'm going to tell you a little something that a lot of people, oddly enough, don't know. Do you realize that the Texas Constitution has its own Bill of Rights? That's good. I'm definitely in the right room. People that know that. So let me tell you a little something about our Bill of Rights. Article 1, Section 1 of the Texas Constitution begins with these words. Texas is a free and independent state subject only to the Constitution of the United States, only, in the maintenance of our free institutions and the perpetuity of the Union depends on the right of local self-government unimpaired to all the states. So, Article 1, Section 1, right out of the gate, which, by the way, is a post-Civil War Constitution, so let's just get that out of the way says that our continued participation in the Union is predicated upon our right of local self-government unimpaired. So let me ask you this question. In relationship to the federal government, do you believe that our right of local self-government has been impaired? Yes. <laughs> Feeling like I'm in the right room still. So let me take you to the next portion of the Texas Bill of Rights. Article 1, Section 2, which has existed in some form in every constitution that Texas has had back to the days of the Republic, says these words, all political power is inherent in the people and all free governments are founded on their authority and instituted for their benefit. And the people have at all times the inalienable right to alter, reform, or abolish their form of government in such manner as they may think expedient. Now, if the sentiment behind that sounds familiar, it should. Because it was a pure expression of the right of self-government and self-determination that practically spilled right out of the mind of Thomas Jefferson, who penned the Declaration of Independence. So since we are all on the same page, we're all about rights, we all kind of dig the fact that we have a Bill of Rights in the Texas Constitution, understand that the topic we're going to talk about tonight 
is absolutely 100% within our rights to have this conversation and to do what it is that I have worked for since August 24th, 1996. You see, uh, until fairly recently, people referred to it by all kind of interesting terms, Texas secession, withdrawing from the union, they had all kinds of things. But thankfully, Nigel Farage and the UK Independence Party and the Eurosceptics did us a huge favor and coined the term Brexit, which works exactly for us because, you know, we actually have an X in our name, so Texit works out a whole lot better, right? So, you know, it, what, but what it did for us was it encapsulated, this one term encapsulated a line of thought that said this, that the people of Texas are the best people to govern Texas. I mean, imagine for a moment if someone came to your house, let's say, I came and knocked on your door and I said, hey, I need 40% of your money handed over. What are you going to do? Where's my gun? Bingo. <laughs> but what if I said, oh, I'm sorry, you can't have one of those either without my permission, right? Or what if I said, oh, hang on just a moment. You're releasing too much carbon into the atmosphere. We're just going to take your car from you. Right? I mean, think about that. What, you know, I would be in trouble. Trust me, I'm not coming to your house because I don't want to wind up with more holes than a cheese grater. Okay? We don't call but the principle remains the same. You see, as a union of states, because that's essentially what it is. I mean, it's literally baked into the name. United States, not United State, not just America, United States of America. We are states who have bound together. We have delegated certain powers to a federal government. We have in return accepted that there are some things that we are not allowed to do. But beyond that, the 10th Amendment to the Constitution is very clear. Anything not delegated to the federal government or prohibited to the states is reserved to who? The people and the states. I'm a people and we live in a state. And right now, the people of this state are getting sick and tired of living under 180,000 pages of federal laws, rules, and regulations that if we were to print them out and stack them up would be taller than the San Jacinto Monument which is taller than the Washington Monument. I got to throw a Texas brag in there, right? But it would be taller than that. I mean, think about the irony of that situation, just how ridiculous it is. The San Jacinto Monument stands on the plains where Sam Houston and the Texian army defeated Santa Ana, who was a tyrant. And that tyrant went to do what? Strip the Texans of their rights to utterly drive them either into the sea or back into the United States or into the grave. And so the monument to that victory, which bought and won Texas independence, is now dwarfed by the number of federal laws, rules, and regulations that we must abide by. It's so many that many authors have come out and studies have come out that said that every single one of us in here very likely commit somewhere around three federal criminal offenses per day. You think you're walking the straight and narrow, I'm in a room full of outlaws, at least according to those guys. But you see, it's even worse than that. Because it's not just those laws. Think about this scenario as it stands right now. As Texans, we discuss policy, we debate, we have vigorous disagreements, but we have a system in place. We debate, we pass laws, we may go to the polls for constitutional amendment elections, we make decisions. We do it as Texans. It's our system, it's called a republic. Now understand that any decision that we make, any agreement, whether we agree or agree to disagree, can be overruled by the stroke of a pen 
from an unaccountable and unelected federal judge, and often is. You know, our governor is very fond of talking about when he was attorney general how many times he sued the Obama administration, but I think we should be asking ourselves, why was it necessary to do that in the first place? We already have Ken Paxton as attorney general fighting the, the Biden administration and already sort of already winning a court case because it's not over yet. But here we are. The man, 24 hours in office, destroys tens of thousands of jobs. Decides that he's going to go through and fulfill all of these campaign promises that they just spent a year crisscrossing the United States making that are policies that would make Karl Marx look like Rush Limbaugh and they're making good on them. And here we are. Key economic sectors under threat. The ability for a gentleman over here like your county judge to have to be in a position to beg for money that first goes to the federal government or perhaps passes through the state when as Texans we overpay somewhere between 103 to 160 billion dollars annually into the federal system. That's money that comes out of my pocket, comes out of your pocket, comes out of your pocket to go to the federal coffers and we never see it again. Not in grants, not in services, in no way. Imagine for a moment this relationship. The doctor comes and he pulls, draws all the blood out of your body. He then takes it and he spills about 40% of it on the floor and takes the rest and puts it in your arm and says, lucky you, <clears throat> you, you wouldn't be alive without me. That, my friends... It's how the federal government treats Texas. But more importantly, that's how the federal government treats Texans, me and you and everyone else that lives in our fine, fine, fine state. You see, it goes on and on. And I could give you all kinds of wonderful stats about Texas, but you understand we're not at that debate now. Just like I said a moment ago, I'm not here to talk about Texit because we can have that debate at some point and I can have that debate with you by asking you one simple question. Here's your hypothetical. If Texas was currently a self-governing independent nation state, if our laws all began and ended at our borders, if we had our own passports, our own embassies, our own military, all the money that we pay out in taxes stayed here, that we were able to create our own policies without fear of being overridden by some unaccountable, unelected federal bureaucrat. If we were self-governing in every respect, and this debate was not about Texas, but was about whether or not we were going to join the union, would you vote to join the union? I mean, come on, they're going to make an excellent case, right? They're going to make a wonderful case. I mean, because on day one, you're going to get crushed by 180,000 pages of those federal laws. You're going to inherit almost $30 trillion worth of debt that's going to dry, you know, basically we're looking at about $70,000 for every man, woman, and child in Texas of debt right off the bat. I mean, come on, is that not a selling point? I mean, how exciting is that? Come on, you got to get excited about that. Who, who doesn't like that much debt, right? Well, I'll give you one better. There was a study that was done that said that this thing called federal regulatory accumulation, you know, everyone knows the federal government has never seen a regulation that they don't like. They don't repeal regulations. They just sort of pile them on one after the other, one right after the other. So this study out of George Basin University said this, when the study was released, because of federal regulatory accumulation, the median household income was somewhere around 50 some odd thousand dollars. In the absence of those federal regulations, they found 
that the average median household income would have been $330,000. So not only are they stealing your tax money, they're regulating the economy such that you are poorer than you would be. And here's the saddest part about it. This is the thing that I think, and you know, I'm not an economist, I'm not a policy wonk like that, but this is the stat in this relationship that breaks my heart the most. Because you see, that study also found out that the people that are affected the hardest by that are the working poor and those below the poverty line. Because all of that has a tendency to slide down into the goods and services that are bought most often by the working poor and those below the poverty line. So when you drive around in neighborhoods where you have the rural poor or in the inner city and you see people living in poverty, understand that the federal government, through either intent or ineptitude, drove those people there and conspires to keep them there. So that would be a selling point, right? Let's join the union so we can crush poor people because that's the way it is. It goes on and on. So I'll ask you the question. If Texas was free and independent right now, would you vote to join? It's tough. It's a tough question. And I think it's one that every Texan should consider. Now, obviously, I'm kind of leaning a certain way, you might have guessed. But that's not the issue at hand right now. You know, I'm perfectly willing to have the discussion about Texas. I sort of love to talk about what post-Texas policy would look like, like what are we going to do about a national defense, what are we going to do about Social Security, I wrote a whole book about that because I got tired of answering the questions. Then we took that part of it and put it on our website so I could just pe send people the link. But what is important right now is that, and, and I love the fact that I, I wound up in Orange County on today of all days because one of the things that our organization has worked for since 2005 is an independence referendum. You see, ultimately, questions of this magnitude, questions of how we govern ourselves are not up to me, not individually. What did it say? All political power is inherent in who? People. The people. It doesn't say all political power is inherent in the politicians or the pollsters or the pundits or the self-loathing Texas elitist media types. All political power is inherent in the people and we are the people so this question must be put to the people of texas and that question is this should the state of texas reassert its status as an independent nation yes. Yes. well i'm not asking you to answer it now let's have a debate <laughs> first I'm trying to sharpen my teeth here y'all <laughs> but why is today so special we well, see, for me, this was a long road. August 24th, 1996, I crossed what I refer to as the proverbial line in the sand. It was the first time that I was introduced to the concept of Texas independence. And, and I got to tell you, it was, a, it was a definite change for someone who was about as red, white, and blue as you possibly could, could get. You know, I mean, it was, it was tough to come to terms with it, but what it did was it made a lot of sense. And so what I did was I looked around the world once I found out that Texas independence was even an option and I said, okay, somebody else has to have done this. And lo and behold, what do I find? At the end of World War II, there were 54 recognized countries around the world and at the end of the 20th century, there were 192. Those countries did not fall from space. The earth did not get any bigger. They were people just like us who said, we simply just want the right to govern ourselves. We don't want to dominate others, but we also don't want to be the subjects of others. We have a way of life that we want to preserve. Guess what? So do we. 
And in the last few weeks, it has become even more evident that that is important. Green New Deal, Beto on his gun grabs, breaking the back of, uh, of our oil and gas industry, fingers meddling down in our local governments, the fact that now they want to institute some sort of national voting standard, if that doesn't scare you, nothing should. I mean, we're talking about the federal government here. I tell people, if you ever want a good example of, uh, of federal government efficiency, go through a hurricane and watch FEMA let bags, bags of ice melt out there at Ford Park. You will understand what we're talking about. But the fact of the matter, folks, is this. Once I was introduced to this concept, I knew that we were going to have to put this to a vote of the people. And lo and behold, since the early 1900s, there have been 48 independence referenda just like the one we're talking about here, like the one we saw in Scotland in 2014, and like the one we saw in the UK, where the people of the United Kingdom went to the polls and voted to leave the European Union. Now, if you think it's vastly different, I would suggest to you that it is not. And I'm not going to go into that tonight because this is not a lecture series and there is a video on the website and I think I've already covered how much I hate to repeat myself, right? But the fact of the matter is we saw those people do it. Peaceful political movements that said simply, we would like to reclaim our right of self-government. And so here we are today. For me, the tail end of a bit of a, well, not the tail end, but at least the next stage of a very long process. Because today, State Representative Kyle Biederman marched down to the clerk's office in the Texas House and filed the Texas Independence Referendum Act. Not a bill for Texas to withdraw from the union, but a bill that would allow Texans to go to the polls in November and vote on the issue. Now imagine, we're going to have a very lengthy debate. If we could get this thing through the legislature, the people of Texas are going to have a very lengthy debate. And honestly, it may not even make it through the legislature, but trust me, the debate has started. You know, that, that's that, that phrase that I heard before, the avalanche has begun. It's a bit late for the pebbles to vote, right? And by pebbles, we're talking about the legislature and the establishment and the powers that be. But let me translate it into Texan for you. The horse is out of the barn. <laughs> the people of Texas, for the duration of this legislative session and possibly up to November of 2021, are going to have some vigorous debates on the pros and cons of Texas. But because of what State Representative Biederman did, the primary issue right now that we have to decide is not whether I support Texas and you don't, and what those reasons are, and maybe what your reasons are. The one thing that we have to decide amongst ourselves is, who best to make this decision? Is it an entrenched political establishment that has somewhat of an elitist attitude that believe that they know what's best for us? That somehow we're just too stupid and we're too daft and we're just not responsible enough? to make those decisions for ourselves? Or is a decision like this best left up to the people? For 24 years, there was no mechanism for us to really have a substantial debate that ended in a vote for this. And that changed today. So I will be eternally grateful to Representative Biederman, who I will tell you, after working with him to get this done, and being very clear about his motivations on it, he is less concerned with what his colleagues in the legislature think about it than what the people think about it. And I can tell you that in the run-up to getting this bill filed, and all through today after he filed it around noon, the response from the people is overwhelming. From not just people that are pro-Texit or from the TNM, from our organization, but from people all over who say, look, I agree that it's time that we had this conversation. I'm not sold, but now I know that I can be sold 
if we have a substantial debate on it. And now every elected official is going to be forced to choose from the state house to the school house because withdrawing from a federal super state is going to impact all of us. Now, I do believe that the pros definitely outweigh the cons. And I believe that we can make our case better than the other side. But I am willing to withhold rubbing their nose in it because <laughs> I'm a debater from a long time back and I'm a bit pent up on this issue, right? But I'm willing to withhold so that we can, as at least Texans come together and say, at a minimum, we should have the ability to vote on it. So with that being said, because I have a tendency to get long-winded and preachery about Texas, I'm just going to leave you with this. If you want to know more about the referendum bill, or if you want to know more about Texas or Texas independence, there's places to go. I'm going to invite you to go to our website at tnm.me, or you could take out your smartphone right now and text the word TEXIT to 33339. Notice I didn't say go to Joe 3330 or whatever it was. That's never going to get old for me. Too many. <laughs> Four. 33339. Shoot a text there. Uh, well, look, we got the 1836 phone number, right? 800-662-1836. We're not going to push our luck on a short code for texting. But the, the bottom line, and, and, I, and I'll, t with your permission, I'll take some time for some questions at the tail end, but let me just leave you with this. If you want to know more information about that, we literally answer every question. Social Security, <clears throat> Medicare, is this constitutional? Is it illegal? Did the Supreme Court say that it was bad? What are we going to do about a military? What are we going to do about the funding? How are we going to fund ourselves? Literally every question, including the one about people who wanted to know if their college sports team was going to still play in their conference. <laughs> it's all there, folks. But the bottom line is this. For those of you that are already there, those that answered at the very beginning, that you're already there. You already want to see Texas as a nation among nations, a free and independent state, every embodiment of those first words of the Texas Bill of Rights. It's going to take you putting in maximum effort to get this done because the political establishment, the permanent political class do not want to see you going to the polls and voting on this issue. So I will tell you, that our state representative, who is now Speaker of the House, was actually asked about this issue back in 2016. And he said, I will tell you this right now, uh, like any issue that my voters in Southeast Texas are for, if I hear from my, you know, my voters back home that they want me to vote in favor of that, I'll do it. If they want to reach out to me, my phone's there, my email is there. Well, then he was a state representative, but now, Right now, he is the Speaker of the House. He has got a tremendous amount of power. So if you believe that Texas, or at a minimum, Texans should be able to vote on this, you must call Dade. And don't let up and let him know that you want to see this pass through. You want to see a floor debate on it. You want to get it through the legislature because he can remove the roadblocks. And the same thing with Robert Nichols. And before you think that it might be a futile exercise, let me tell you a little short story. This issue cuts very oddly politically. Several sessions back, when we first tried to get this filed, the Legislative Council stripped out the referendum portion, left the rest of it as uh, just, you know, sort of a, a statement of grievance. State Representative James White, you guys know him, up in House 19, filed it, obviously sands the referendum, and by the time it was over with, there were names that signed on to that bill as co-authors that no one had in their politician 
Texas referendum bingo cards. I guarantee you. Dennis Bonin, former Speaker of the House, signed on to that bill. Cecil Bell signed on to that bill and several others. So this issue cuts very oddly. But you have to implore these elected officials, even if they don't support Texas, to at least support your rights under Article One, Section 2 of the Texas Constitution to vote on this issue. And I would be remiss if I did not mention the fact, since I am at a Republican Party meeting, that this is in the platform now. You're welcome. <laughs> 93% vote to add this to the platform that said that if the federal government substantially changes our form of government, then Texas retains the right to do this very thing. So I'm at a Republican Party meeting with that in the platform with a bunch of people who believe that rights come from God and dig the fact that the Constitution has the Bill of Rights and understand that under the current circumstances, if we were already a free and independent nation, we probably wouldn't join into that union. I'm definitely in the right room. So before I take questions, uh, I'll leave you with this. It was Sam Houston who said that Texas will again lift its head and stand among the nations. This was after Texas had joined the union. He said, Texas will again lift its head and stand among the nations. And I believe that that time is right now. And the question is, who is going to stand with her?